songs, especially when I get down. You feel like you don't have no hope in the world, feel like everything's against you. But what a friend we have in Jesus. It died. You just replaced the batteries in it. You must have gave me dead batteries. There should be a whole brand new pack down there. I think he's cut me off. He cut me off Sunday, now he's cut me off tonight. I think it's in a second or bottom drawer, Skyler. Amen, amen. We're going to be in James chapter number 2. And we started looking at the findings of this partiality in verse number 5. And so I believe we're going to be looking at verses 6, 7, and 8, Lord willing. But we'll see how far we get along in those, amen. If I can get down to it. Amen, amen. Well, we, when we started looking at the findings, we, the last time we looked, which I know it's been several weeks, we, we looked at verse number 5 on the heirs. When it says, Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he had promised to them that loved him? So we looked at the heirs, we looked at the pondering and the poor, we saw the poor had favor in their faith, and then we saw the promise, we saw the land, the kingdom that he promised them, the love. So we're going to be looking and starting in verse number 6, and for a quick recap, we looked at this this partial, this partiality, um, we, we, we're talking about being pious towards someone or being, you know, preferring someone over another. We saw how God said in verse number one, how we don't even need to show faith of God when we're going to be have respect of person or has that pious mentality. We saw the folly that this this pious mentality or this partiality that we have it labeled as shows and, and what it brings to us as individuals and Christians. And so we're looking and we're going to continue in this findings on what, what this partiality includes and how, it, how we can reject the heirs of God. And, 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 the, and we're going to look in verse number 6 on the hatred that it that upholds. So we looked at the, heir, the, the heirs in <coughs> verse number 15. <coughs> and we're going to begin looking in verse number 6 on the hatred. And so we might get down through verse number 7, Lord willing, tonight. So we'll, we'll start reading in verse number 1, and then we'll pray as Skylar continues to find me some batteries. Amen. It says, My brethren, have, you not, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ for the, for the Lord of glory with respect of persons? For, there, for if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and to say unto him, Sit, there, sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou here, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he had promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you, and draw you before the, before the judgment seat. Do not they blaspheme thou, that worthy name by the which ye are called. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scriptures, Thou, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect of person, ye commit sin and are convinced, convicted, convinced of the law as transgressors. Lord, help us tonight, God, as we continue to look in, in James and on how do you want us to live our Christian life. I pray you touch us and help us now, God. Allow us to be able to continue in this Christian walk in faith and Trust in you and be able to uphold your promises and your commandments and your and, and, and the things you have placed for us. Just help us now and we'll, we'll bless you in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to be looking tonight at this hatred in verse number 6. It says, but ye have despised the poor. That word despised means to condemn, to scorn, to abhor. It's talking about to, to just absolutely hate another person, individual, or thing. I tell you, I think sometimes we get for granted of that. 
Or, or, or I think sometimes we, 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 take, we, we are guilty of that, I should say. We, we will sit there and we get so angry at another brother or another Christian or another person. And, and in rage, we said, oh, I just hate him or I hate that person. And, and in all aspects, what we're saying is we despise them. We can't stand them. We wish they weren't around. We, we're saying that they, with their, their lapse of presence in our life would be better without us. Or, or our, our life would be better without them. Well, I tell you, the Bible, I'm glad, to, I'm glad Jesus doesn't despise or hate any one of us. See, Jesus himself was despised and rejected of men, but yet he loved each and every one of those that despised and rejected him. This hatred includes despising. Titus 2.15, it says, These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Well, I tell you, if God doesn't want men to despise us, he surely doesn't want us to despise them. We are supposed to show the love and, 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 and help and, and kindness of Jesus. That's what Christianity is supposed to be. However, we'll sit here and be pious and arrogant, think that we're better than each other. I tell you, there is nothing more worse than a Christian who looks down on a sinner or another Christian. Because we ain't no better. It doesn't matter how close we think we get to God, we're still miles and miles from Him. The span between us and God is, is irrelevant. Yet we'll look down on those that, that, that they, maybe they should know better. Or may, maybe they're a new Christian. Or maybe they're just a sinner coming in wanting to get some help. I tell you, it's a shame that, they, that, that the world hates Christians because of the way they get treated. I can't tell you how many times I've went to a restaurant, especially on a Sunday, someone gives us gift cards or whatever, and we get to go out to eat, which is kind of a rare occasion for our family. But, but I, I can't tell you how many times I'll have a waitress say, you know, y'all are different. I usually hate church folk because they treat us horribly. I had one lady, she was an older lady, and she was talking to me, and I was telling her I was the pastor over here, and she said, you know, you're the first one that's been kind to me all day. She said, I don't understand how people that are supposed to be Christians and go to church can go and get their, what she said, get their Jesus on and then come and treat us like crap. Her words. Maybe I shouldn't have said that from the pulpit, sorry. But she, she, she was so against Christians. And it's so hard to rend people that way without showing them the love of Christ. It breaks my heart when I go talk to someone. And they don't even want to get to know me because the name that I hold means absolutely nothing to them. You tell someone you're a Christian, or you tell someone you're a preacher, or you ask someone about church, they immediately just shut down because of the way Christians treat them. You know who God was hateful to? You know who, you know who Jesus got on underneath their skin and pointed out their sin and was, 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 was almost vindictive to them was the ones that thought they were religious. Even, even the woman at the well or the, or the woman that got thrown that should have been stoned for her adultery. Even though God pointed out their faults and, and notice God pointed out their faults the disciples did it. God did. He still did it in a loving manner. I don't, I don't see one ounce of hatred any time God called out someone's sin. But you'll see the Pharisees do it. You'll, 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 talk, you'll see Judas mocking the woman who, who busted up the, the ointment on Jesus' feet. You see the religious crowd thinking they're better than everyone else. Poor man praying on the, on the altar. And the Pharisee is scorning him in front of everyone. We wonder why we can't get people through the door. We wonder why we can't actually get them to come to the Lord. I tell you what, if I was a lost person, grew up in the world, and I saw what Christianity is, I, want, I don't think I would want it either. If I thought it was going to make me a hateful, vindictive person, I don't think I would want anything to be a part of it. How many times have we heard this year people come into church and say that they thought that people would judge them because of the way they live? Because that's what churches do, unfortunately. 
Now don't get me wrong, the Bible says we are supposed to judge the Spirit. We're supposed to judge the fruit of Christianity. Not the lost and dying people that need to come to Him. If there was someone that came in here professing to be a preacher and walked like a homosexual and talked like a homosexual and had a homosexual relationship, you best believe I would judge him. Because he's bringing the name of God down with him. But if there came one who really wanted something from God, as long as he didn't bring those acts in this church, I would love them and help them and try to get them to the one that could change them. See, the difference between judging as a Christian and judging the world is the Bible says, try the spirits, whether they be of him or they be some other thing. See, what, what we do is we judge the people that come in the church and we forget the people that's already sitting here. We forget our family. We forget our friends. But maybe someone comes in here looking a little rough. We'll side-eye them. We'll stay away from them. Instead of loving on him the way that they're supposed to be. Now don't get me wrong. Safety is a big thing. A big thing. But the love of Christ should never come second to our hatred of what they're not. We see the despising. Proverbs 1, 7. It says, the fear of the Lord is beyond the knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. See, when we begin to despise things. When we begin to despise people, we lose the wisdom and instruction of God. Because if we really feared God, if we really feared what God and, 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 and accept what God has done for us, I don't think there's any way that we would despise someone that would want to come to know Him. Matthew 18.10, it says, Take heed that ye despise not these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of the Father which is in heaven. I tell you, one thing that, one thing that we do, maybe, maybe we don't get upset about the people that come in through the back of the door. But we'll sit here and get upset about our children. Oh, we want children. Oh, we need children. Oh, we want to have them come to the Lord. But, but Lord forbid they run through the halls or leave trash or, or make noise. I tell you, it don't bother me. We, we, we've sat through so many camp meetings the last few weeks that, that you'll have ten babies crying in the middle of service. It don't bother me none. Because what mom and daddy's doing is trying to show them how to serve the Lord. Maybe they get a little loud. Mom and daddy can take them out. It ain't going to bother nobody, nothing. Maybe we're over having an activity and the kids get a little out of hand. You, just, you train them. The Bible says train up a child. The Bible says where the, where, where the oxen is, the, 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 the uh, oh, it just lost me. But, but it's, it's saying where, where, where you have animals, talking about children, it's going to be dirty. You're going to have to deal with problems. You're going to have to muck out the stalls. But I'd rather muck out the stalls every day than not having any little feet running through here. Not having any teenagers. Maybe you have to get on to them. But I tell you, we, we live in a day that we want everything so perfect and so, so, so by the book. And we, we don't want any mishaps. And we want to make sure there's no problems that we despise the young people and end up walking out the door. I tell you, I enjoyed our youth nights. I absolutely loved it. I enjoy crazy, believe it or not. Uh, well, I guess y'all could believe it. I have five children. But them being, especially in a, in a place where they're, they're supposed to be loud and they're supposed to have fun, it doesn't bother me. Maybe, maybe the fellowship hall gets a little dirty or the Sunday school classrooms get a little messed up. I would rather clean them up every day than not ever have to. But we'll sit here. I just, I don't, I don't like it being so loud. I can't believe we threw 50,000 water balloons and now we have to pick up the whole parking lot. But that's what people say and think. And believe it or not, children hear it. And then they think they're a burden and they're not wanted and they're not loved and they're not appreciated. 
There's not, a one, there's not one child in this church that I don't try to hug and love on in the right way. I don't really do that to our teenage girls. But, but I don't make sure they know that the preacher don't love them. Because I want to be able, I want them to know that they can come here and have a place. I mean, Lakin and, and Keegan, the first time Keegan ever talked to me, I was shocked as could be. And, and they were outside showing me Lakin's Jeep. And she, she was tickled to death that I just went out there and looked at it, Brother Ben. But I love them. I don't want to see them leave and go somewhere else. I don't want to push them out the door because I don't think we care. As much as that knucklehead up back there rattles my brain, I love him. I get upset. Sure, sure I do. I get upset at Jetty. Jetty infuriates me. Especially that night he told you what he did. I, I could have beat him. I know. But they're kids. They, they have to learn. Yeah. Listen. Listen, I, I was in trouble every day of my life. But ask, my, ask my old pastor. He'll tell you. Amen. But when we try to get young people and little ones to act like adults, when our adults don't even act like adults, it'll just push them out. I tell you, I'm excited for Christmas play. I know Raylan and Jetty and Zoe are going to be running up and down the aisles not knowing what's going on. I know it's coming, but it's okay. It's okay. But what's going to happen in 10 years when them three are teenagers and they're still in this church and they're still serving the Lord and we can have a youth group and sing a youth choir. But it starts now. But what happens if now if I sit them down and tell them they can't do nothing? If I didn't let them take up change offering and feel a part of this church? If I told them they just had to sit down, shut up and not do nothing? Do you think when they're teenagers they're going to be up there? They don't want to serve the Lord. They don't want to come to functions. That's why I don't get on to my girls when they say amen. Actually, I encourage it. I like Jetty sitting up in choir and raising his hand. I wish more of our young people would get up into the choir. They don't understand, but one day they will. I, got so, I, I, was, I was berated so hard by worshiping God that I stopped. And for years I would never say anything in church. And when you truly want to worship God, it eats you. And thankfully, God brought me out of that. For years, I was told I couldn't sing, and I shouldn't play, the, play an instrument. I wasn't good enough, and I stopped. And I'm still not, I, I'm not the best pianist. I can't play every song there is. I know there's more instrumentals that are better than me, but what I do, I do for God. I don't do for anyone else. I can't sing the greatest. But I give it all I can to worship Him. I don't want to see our children go through that. I don't want someone to, one of our ch children, or even a young convert in Christ that may be 40 or 50 years old that want to do something for God, feel like they can't do nothing because everyone else is looking down on them. I believe we all know how that feels. And whether we want to admit it or not, sometimes we look that way towards other people. This hatred, it causes despising. This hatred, it makes people feel different. It says, but ye despise the poor. I know we're all different. I was talking to Skylar today about people being different. My brother Noah's different. He's autistic. I mean, true story. He's certified autistic. You know how upset I would be, Brother Frankie, if someone treated him different just because of autism? You know how mad he would be? If someone talked down to him or treated him like he was dumb. The dude's smart as a whip. He just don't think like everyone else does, which I probably don't think like everyone else does either. But see, God's uh, using him despite of the things that he goes through. And he's going to do something great for God. 
But yeah, we look at people that's different. I met a man this week up at, up at the church we were at, and and he is, he has I don't know what kind of disease. But he he has slurred speech and he walks almost like he's crippled. But I tell you, he has a heart for God and he probably knows more Bible than anyone in here, including me. But yet we'll sit here because we can raise both of our hands and we have all the functions of our body. We can sing and we can talk and we can get in front of people. We look down on people like that. We make them feel different. Outside of this body, we're the same. We're a soul that's either going to heaven or going to hell. Either by rejection or by redemption. Yet we look on the outward appearance where God looks on the heart. Romans 2, 11. We know that the Israelites were very racist people. They hated anyone that wasn't them. Especially the Samaritans or any other form of half-breeds that they would call them. But Romans was, dealt, was dealing with that. It says in Romans 2, 11, it says, for there, is no di- for there is no respect of persons with God. For as many as ha- have sinned without law shall also perish without law, and as many as have sinned in law shall be judged by the law. For there is no hearer of the law are just before God. But the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do do by nature the things contained in the law, these, having not the law, are a law unto themselves. He's saying just because you have a written law and they don't, they still know what to do and what not to do. See, people get so hung up on this law. What the law was for And what Hebrews explains, and Romans go in detail on it, it was to show the Jews that just because they were God's chosen people didn't give them a free pass to heaven. That they were just as wicked and ungodly and sinners as we were. Because if the law was the only way to heaven before salvation, how do you explain all the nations outside of Jews that had priests of God and salvations of God and biblical experiences that we hear about all throughout the Bible that are saved and going to heaven? How do you, spell, how do you explain Balaam and Melchizedek and all these other supposedly Gentiles that had no hope for God before Jesus came? Jews were God's chosen people. The law was to show their imperfections. Paul continued saying, Which show the works of the law written in their heart, their conscience also bearing witness. For their thoughts, for their thoughts, the meanwhile, accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. Acts 10, 30, 34 through 35, it says, then, then Peter opened his mouth and said, of, of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of person, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. I tell you, there is no room in God's churches for racism. None. God loves everyone. We used to sing that song, God loves all the little children of the world. And when we get adults, we forget it. Wonder why we can't reach, reach the communities in this area that, are, that aren't white, that are Latino and black and Asian, because they come to church and they feel like outsiders. These God's people make them feel that way. But they need God just as much as we do. They need salvation just as much as we do. They need a church that will love them and accept them into the body just as much as we do. Romans 3.10, it says, as is is written, there's none righteous. No, not one. See, God doesn't make anyone different. He lumps us all in. We're either sinners or not sinners. And I tell you, every single person who's walked on the face of the earth outside of Jesus Christ himself is a sinner. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. See, Romans is a great salvation book. 
However, Romans is written to show the Jews that they need to stop being partial towards everyone else. That salvation is for all. The gifts of God is for all. The church is for all. You don't have to have a black church. You don't have to have a, a Mexican church. You don't have to have an Asian church. We have the church. Lord willing, we'll pick up in the rest of verse 6 and 7 on the heretics that this partiality finds. I hope and pray that as we, we move forward in our Christian walk that we love people the way God loved us. I hope and pray that there don't come a time that we don't run people out because of our hatred and, and the way we act. I would rather people walk out the church because of my preaching the Bible than for them to say they didn't feel welcomed and loved in this place. I hope every visitor that comes in here feels like they can't move their arm for three days because how much it got shook. I hope that if someone goes and bashes our church, it's not because the people inside didn't love them. I would rather them go against the Bible and Jesus than against our love we should have for them. Because I can live with them going against the Bible and Jesus because people always will. But if they go against the way I treated them, then that's something I need to fix. Amen. Amen. Well, I do apologize I didn't wear a tie tonight. Um, like I said, I, I'm struggling. My neck and back is killing me. And uh, last night we had to leave service early. My, I got real dizzy and my hands went numb. And I just haven't been able to really have a lot of pressure on my neck. So if that offended anyone tonight, I do apologize. It's not a normal occurrence for me. Amen. Amen. Alrighty. Well, Brother Estes, why don't you dismiss us in prayer this evening?